In this video, we're going to begin looking at scattering theory in quantum mechanics. Uh, the motivation for this is that scattering experiments uh, have and continue to be very useful in studying things like the structure of matter, as for example, was the case with the discovery of the nucleus of atoms by Rutherford, where he scattered alpha particles off of gold atoms, uh, and in understanding interactions between particles. This interaction is usually modeled by some potential V of R. Uh, these types of experiments continue to have uh, important implications in physics, as has been popularized, for example, by the Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland. In general, our interest will be in determining this interaction potential, which is typically unknown, by inferring it from the way that incident particles on a target will scatter off of a target. So the situation that we're looking at is you have a flux of incident particles, which we're going to be modeling as uh, plane waves. These are our incident particles. And these are uh, plane matter waves. which uh, are typically noted by the wave function. These are going to hit some particular target, which is going to cause the particles to scatter in some manner, which we're then going to measure on uh, a range of detectors. So this is uh, an array of detectors. And these will allow us to measure uh, the number of scattered particles by this uh, target, which is being modeled to some potential uh, in the various directions. In, in this particular course, we're going to restrict ourselves to uh, one particular type of scattering. And this is uh, non-reactive elastic scattering processes. By non-reacting, I mean that the composition of, part of the particles involved in the collision doesn't change. So we're not allowing for chemical reactions. And we're also not allowing for uh, the formation of new particles, for example, in high energy uh, collisions. By elastic, we mean that the translational, the total translational kinetic energy of the, tar the particles in the target and the incident particles is conserved. And what that means is that the internal chain, the internal states of these particles don't change. By internal states, uh, as an example, I mean that if we were to be sending a bunch of hydrogen atoms into the target, the energy levels of the electrons in these hydrogen atoms would remain the same. So this is total kinetic energy is conserved. We will also ignore uh, the fact that quantum mechanical particles usually have spin. So these will be our further assumptions. We will also assume that the target is small, uh, by which I mean that the incident particles can only collide once. They can't hit the target and then collide with that one, then hit another one, then uh, collide again, and so on. We are only looking at cases where one particular incident particle can only scatter off once from the target. We will also ignore 
any type of uh, interference between uh, the scattered particles. So since these have wave-like behavior, they can uh, technically interfere with one another, constructively or destructively. Um, we're going to ignore that effect. We'll also assume that the particles are non-relativistic. So they're not traveling at speeds close to the speed of light. And we're going to assume that the interaction potential is uh, a function of the difference between the position of the incident particles and the position of the target particles. Technically speaking, this means that if we have incident particles of mass one, target particles of mass two, we're going to work in uh, the center of mass reference frame or frame of reference just as we did for the hydrogen atom. So rather than working with the individual masses, we're going to work with the reduced mass of these particles. This is reference. Okay, so we're really stripping down the problem to the simplest possible case uh, and develop some tools for uh, essentially estimating the effect of this target from the observation of the scattered particles. Before doing that, we have to define certain uh, quantities that are important in scattering experiments. In the next video, we'll begin looking at a quantity known as the differential scattering section or uh, and more generally at the scattering cross section.